Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. So, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And Lord, we thank you for all the mothers out there. And we, I just ask that you give them a great blessing, Lord, for today is their day. And Lord, I just ask now that you be with me as I teach this lesson. Let it touch the, all the hearts, minds, and souls out there. I ask all it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 43. I know I kind of look different right now because according to the doctor, I don't need to, nothing but readers to read with now. So, all right, chapter 43. And the famine was sore or great in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, Go again and buy us a little food. Once again, they had to go back to Egypt to get some food, not knowing that who they're dealing with is their own brother. Now, there have been times that we, we've gone around and, and I've actually met our cousins and never even really knew who they were, hadn't we, Kayla? But, you know, that happens. But this time it, it happened for another reason. And Judah speak, spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face except your brother be with you. If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy these food. He was remembering what Joseph had told him. Kind of when you come back next time, bring your brother, your youngest brother. But if thou wilt not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. In other words, unless your youngest brother is with you, you ain't getting no more corn. You ain't going to get no more food. And Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me? as to tell the man whether he had yet a brother. And they said, The man asked us straightly of our state, of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive, and have ye another brother? And we told him accordingly to the tenor of these words, Could we certainly know that he would say, Bring your brother down? Well, number one, he was finding out if his daddy was still alive. I mean, it's been several years since he last seen him. And even when he left him, it, it, dad was up there in age. So he wasn't too sure. And he knew he had a younger brother. Just want to make sure that... Uh, and Judah said unto Israel, his father, send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou, and also our little ones. And I was sure, surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him, if I bring him not unto thee, and set him before thee, and let me bear the blame forever. So he's like saying, if, I don't, if we don't take him, I'll bear the brunt of it, not you. I mean, any good parent would do that. Uh, they, they'll look out for their kids, especially mamas. You don't cross a mama and her child. Uh, even, even in the animal kingdom, you don't mess with the mama's, ba mama's cubs or anything like that, or even the puppies, right, Kayla? For except we had lingered, surely now we had to return this second time. And their father Israel said unto them, If it must be so, now do this 
take of the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, spices, myrrh, nuts, and almonds, and take double money in your hand and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks, carry it again in your hand, pure venture, it was an oversight. He wasn't too sure if that money got put back in there on purpose or not. He was thinking it was an oversight. Uh, hey, uh, I'm bringing this back to you. You left it in my bag. Now, that's being honest. That's being real honest. And in today's world, you don't see a whole lot of honesty anymore. And if you want to see proof of that, just look at Washington, D.C. Oh, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> Take also your brother, arise, go again unto the man. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man, and that he may send away your other brother. And Benjamin, if I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. And the man took the present, and he took double the money in their hands. And Benjamin had arose and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the ruler of his house, Bring these men home and slay and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. He, he told them his boss, you know, let's throw these guys some meals. It actually, t in a way, I guess he told them it was his brothers. And he wanted them to be fed r real nicely. I mean, you know, he's working for the Egyptians, so they're getting the best of everything. And the man did as Joseph bade, or asked. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house and they said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks for the first time and we brought it in that we may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bonds of our donkeys. He's like, why are we here? I've gave, brought back the money you, you left in the bags. Uh, what, can, what else can we do? We're so sorry. I mean, they wouldn't know, know what they were going to expect. And a lot of times with parents, you get the same thing. Um, I know with mom, it's the way she called her names. Uh, if you've done anything wrong, it'd be like Roger Glenn or Alan Dean. And when you've done it like that, you know something was up. Parents have a way of getting at you. Don't they, Alan? And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house. In other words, they had a conversation. And said, Oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food, and it came to pass when we came to the inn that we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack, and the money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand. He's, he's telling the man at the door, we don't know why we're here. We brought back the money. I mean, a lot of us, you know, well, it's a good Christian, if he got too much change back, they, we would give it back. And that's what they were trying to be, good Christian, and wanted to give the money back that, was mis that they believed mistakenly was not taken. I mean, I wouldn't be confused if something like that. And other money we have brought down in our hands to buy food, we cannot tell who put our money in the sacks. Now, they didn't know who did it. And he said, peace be to you. 
fear not your God and the God of your father hath given you treasures in your sack. I had your money and he brought Simeon out unto them. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water and gave them wash their feet and he gave their donkeys providers. In other words, put their donkeys in the stall to feed them. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon for they heard they shall eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the presents which was in their hands unto the house and bowed themselves to him. They, get, they brought in the, the honey and the nuts and, and the fruits of the land and the myrrh and all like that as a present to Joseph. Because not knowing who Joseph was, but he was the king. Good morning, Miss Mary. And asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well? The old man of whom ye spake of, is he yet alive? Again, he was asking, Is your father Israel still alive? And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made opposite. In, in other words, they bowed down to Joseph, not knowing who he really was, but he, from their point of view, he was an Egyptian with power. So they were bowing down to him to show him respect. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, is this your youngest brother, younger brother, of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. And he sought whether to weep and enter into his chamber and wept there. He was holding back the tears, seeing his baby brother. And he just basically went into the other room and cried. Uh, a lot of people does that. And when he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, sit on bread. And I'll sit down, let's eat. And they sat on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians which did eat with him be themselves because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews for that is an abomination to an Egyptian. They did not appreciate the Hebrews. They hated them. I mean, a lot of countries has gone to hating other races because of what they stand for or what they believe. And, and a lot of it has come down on us Christians, especially in the foreign countries like China. They, they have an underground system where they still hold church, but if they get caught preaching the word of God, they're taken out in the square and whipped with a, cane, not a, not a walking cane, but a bamboo cane, that they fix it up in a way that when it hits your body, it cuts into your skin. So you probably, if anybody watching you wrestling, you see them do that sometimes, and you see the whelp marks that land up on their backs from where they hit them with it. But those ain't as bad as the way the Chinese do it. The way the Chinese do it, uh, on wrestling, they got the end of it taped to where it don't split her out. But the Chinese don't have the end of it taped up. So when they hit, all those things just kind of fan out and just cut into you. And if you ever dealt with anything with bamboo, that is some very hard wood. And when you cut it open, the edges are very sharp. And it will do some damage to you. Let's see where the 
There we go. And they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth. And the men marveled at one another. And he took and sent messes, sent messes unto them for, from before him. But Benjamin's mess was five times as much as of theirs, and they drank, and they were merry with them. In other words, he gave his baby brother double portions, more than the rest of them got. And I'm pretty sure the other brothers were like, what's going on here? But they're going to find out what's going on. And a lot of times um, in society, some people does this um, just to be mean to other people. Now, I'm going to give you more than this one. Um, a lot of kids think that mama and daddy has favorites. You, mama and daddy loves them all equally, no matter what. It might seem like one's favorite than the other, but it's not really because the love is still there. That's the reason why I pray that this Roe versus Wade gets overturned. Because they're standing there, all these ladies standing there, it's my body, I do with it what I want. Yeah, but that body inside you is not yours. And to me, that's just nothing but pure out murder. And they don't know what they're actually missing out on. They don't know the joy that they would have with that child. Now, if they don't want the child, they can always put it up for adoption because there's a lot of people out there who can't have children who would love to have them. And they could put it up for adoption at any time. But don't go and kill it. I know mom, even with us as adults, if somebody raised a hand to us, it'd be like Katie barred the door because she's coming after you. And I think the other mothers in here be the same way, right, Miss Mary? You, you do whatever you can to protect your children, even though they're grown. But here Joseph was treating his brothers better than what they treated him. They threw him into a pit, took his coat of many colors away from him, sold him into slavery, but God had other plans for Joseph. Each time he got in a little trouble, God made a way for Joseph. And no matter what troubles you have today, God will make a way for you. No matter how bad you think it is, it's nothing for God to take it, take it and, and put your feet on a better path. You got to remember that all you got to do is ask God for it. God, God's there with you no matter what you're doing. He's standing right there beside you. And these people who think, well, if I go to Bedford and do my little party, and ain't nobody going to know. God will know. Roanoke? Oh, okay, Roanoke. <laughs> well, either way, no matter where they go, God's going to be there. I, you can get down in the biggest hole under the earth, but God's still going to be there. And we've seen God's work in this church. And we see it every day. If you want to see God's hand at work, go check out the Redemption Center. Go downstairs and look at the food bank. That's what God has blessed this church with. And he will bless yourselves, your, your household that way too. When I first moved up here, I had nothing except the vehicle I was driving in and the clothes on my back. 
but God opened the door to where I can get a house and some property and believe it or not, low monthly mortgage payments. But that was all God's work. Through a group that, believe it or not, Jimmy Carter started up. And he has blessed a lot of people with doing this Habitat for Humanity, giving a lot of families, broken families, a home to live in. Now, I'm not a broken family, but I'm blessed by God to have what I got. And God will bless you no matter what you're doing. And if you're in trouble, God's going to help you. It might not look like it at first, but have faith. God will see you through it. All the way through. Now some of us in here have seen God's work when it comes to people in being in trouble. Miss Donna having heart surgery and back, bounced back just like it never even happened. Because God protected her and fixed her. A lot of us in here has been, been blessed by God with treatments that he's given us and the love he has given us. So don't ever forget that God don't love you. Anybody that tells you that, they don't know God. You need to open their eyes to them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for this lesson. And Lord, I'm looking forward to next week's lesson, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that as we go on with the day celebrating Mother's Day, that all the mothers out there get the blessing from you, Lord. I ask all it in Jesus' name.